and at the beginning of it all, some students whisper about everyday things, until the student council president appears, and she declares that it's time for her organization to shine. As for the vice president, he tells Inakami that he has gathered all the materials to fulfill his case, in which a student explains more about this world, and informs that there are people who constantly seek the spotlight. And as for Yusato, he says he is the complete opposite of that, as he is an ordinary high school student who doesn't stand out at all, but deep down he says he is envious of these people opposite him, after all he also wants to have a better life, out of common, and then he decides to leave, but when looking for his umbrella he doesn't find it anywhere, so Yusato notices that there is an umbrella lying around, but he decides not to take it, as he would feel bad for the owner later, furthermore, he is not in the mood to face the consequences of this action, and then he sits down to wait out the rain, and then the student council president, goes to him and comments that it's time to close the school, and Yusato says he's leaving, but upon seeing that he doesn't have an umbrella, Kazuki is willing to lend him a spare one, but the boy communicates by calling Yusato by name, even though they have never exchanged a single word, and so he considers him a nice and kind guy. And before they leave, Kazuki wonders what he should call Yusato, and the boy says he can be called that. Then the president goes to him and says that she will also call him that from then on, and in addition, the two ask him to walk back home together, and seeing this, Yusato is in disbelief that he is going out with the coolest people popular at school, and on the way he comments that he always thought Kazuki was more distant, as he is always only talking to the girls in the room, and he explains that they are the ones who come to talk to him directly, and then he just answers their questions. As for Inakami, Yusato had an even worse idea of her, because for him she was like a goddess that no one could get close to, but upon hearing this, she says that his idea is totally wrong, after all she considers herself just a normal student too, however Kazuki guarantees that she cannot be considered normal, after all she surpasses everyone in every aspect, in addition to being very good at sports and having good looks. And then he says that she should look more objectively at herself, and upon seeing them talking, Yusato becomes curious to know if they are dating, after all there is a rumor about it, but they deny these rumors, and Inakami explains that they only hang out together a lot because of their work on the student council, and she claims that Yusato was the first to ask them this directly, to which he apologizes but Inakami says that she was praising him, as it is much better to say things to their faces than to create unfounded rumors. And after that, she asks if he has any plans for the future, and he says no, Kazuki remembers that she had asked him the same question a while ago, and Inakami says he only asks people that question because she herself has no plans for her future. But upon hearing this, he doesn't understand anything, after all she was about to graduate, and she confirms that she did, but says that there is nothing that makes her want want to try hard, but still, she guarantees that if she puts her mind to it in something, she can achieve her goals at some point, even if it takes a while. And as for Yusato, he comments that who suffers from the complete opposite, but Inakami says that being gifted is not what she wanted, and upon hearing this, he identifies a lot, because even though they are different people, the feelings they both have are the same. And as they walk, Kazuki hears a strange sound, similar to a bell, and then Inakami also hears the same sound getting louder and louder, but Yusato says he doesn't hear anything, and suddenly a magic circle opens beneath their feet, and this makes Inakami excited to find out where they are going, as the idea of seeing monsters and a hero in the other world fascinates her. And after that, Yusato is woken up by Kazuki, and looking around he doesn't understand where he is, and the vice president says he also has no idea where they are, after all he was just woken up by Inakami. And speaking of her, the girl appears behind the two with a very excited look, and then the king addresses them, and says that the three have just woken up, so it is natural that they are confused and have no idea where they are. And Kazuki, already fed up, asks who that guy could be, and when faced with such arrogance, one of the servants tells him to have more respect when talking to Lloyd, but the king says everything is fine, and he asks him to everyone listen carefully. In this he introduces himself as Lloyd Vulgast Linger, the king of the Linger kingdom, and getting straight to the point, he states that the three were summoned to be heroes in the Linger kingdom, and when faced with this news, Inakami almost jumps with happiness. And then Lloyd explains that two years ago his kingdom was besieged by the king of 
the demons of this world as he led an army and managed to attack the Linger kingdom and after a long and intense battle the king barely managed to repel the demons. And since then, the demon lord has been making his army stronger and stronger which is why Lloyd believes that his kingdom will not be able to survive in the next battle and as a last resort they have collected a forbidden magic that allows them to summon warriors from others. Worlds that have the potential to oppose the demon lord. And then Kazuki gets up indignantly and says that the king only summoned them to serve his selfish interests so he orders Lloyd to send them to his world immediately but the king states that this is not possible because the summoning magic of the hero only works in one direction that is, he can bring them there but he cannot send them back. Kazuki then asks what will happen to them from now on and he explains that everyone there left their family behind and the king says he is sorry for their situation too however he is desperate to save his people. And then Kazuki tries to attack but the servants point their weapons at him so Yusato asks the boy to calm down and he claims that building a shack there won't help anything so Lloyd goes to them and promises to find a way to get them back home in the near future but in the meantime he asks the three of them to lend their powers to your kingdom and then Inakami asks why the king calls them heroes after all she doesn't think he knows anything about them and to answer that question he calls another person and she explains that the hero summoning magic contains a spell that looks for those with the greatest potential to be heroes and she claims they must have heard the sound of a bell right after the invocation and this would be proof of their potential to become heroes and then they remember that Yusato had said that he didn't hear any sound at the time or he was simply taken to there for nothing and well the girl takes a crystal ball and says that she will see their magical abilities with it and meanwhile Kazuki asks Yusato if he really doesn't mind not being a hero and he says no after all Wellsy had said that he could perhaps use magic even without being a hero however Kazuki Suki still has his doubts as to whether he would really be happy about being dragged into this situation with them, but Yusato states that being upset won't solve anything, instead he prefers to focus on what can be done. Kazuki says that he is much more sensible than he expected, but Yusato claims that Inakami is accepting this whole situation much better than he is. And when finishing the preparations, Welsi tells Inakami to place her hand on the crystal ball, and then the ball takes on a yellowish color, in which Welsi explains that the girl girl has a greater aptitude for thunder magic, in addition, she also has ample reserves of mana. And upon discovering this, Inakami becomes even more excited, and Yusato comments that this attribute suits a fantasy freak like her very well, and after that, Kazuki puts his hand on the crystal ball too, and Welsi explains that he has an aptitude for light magic, and this is incredible magic, as few are able to use it. Furthermore, this attribute is excellent for fighting demons, and finally, she calls Yusato to test his magic, and when he touches the ball, a green light sets the place on fire, and then Welsi is in shock and just pulls him to the king. And getting there, she reveals that the crystal ball has turned green, at which the king is scared, as this means that his attribute is extremely rare, and then Lloyd says that he must be taken away from the castle, and Yusato is left without understanding anything. Then a scary girl comes to them and asks how the invocation ritual went, but the king tries to talk her out of it, saying that she should be on leave that day but Rose states that a servant of the king could never be on leave. And then she stops in front of Yusato and asks if he would be that hero, and Lloyd says he isn't, because the boy was sent there by mistake. She then introduces herself to Yusato as Rose, the captain of the rescue squad of Kingdom. But upon hearing this, Yusato wonders if Rose would be a trustworthy person, after all he feels a murderous aura coming from her. And then Welsi tells her that the true heroes are waiting near the crystal ball, so the two go there. And Lloyd tells Yusato Sato that he's still going to see what he's going to do with him, and the boy complains, after all Welsi hasn't said anything about his magic yet, and then he asks what the green attribute means, but when he says that, Rose hears him, and decides to take Yusato with her, and Welsi manages to get him out of there, throwing him away. However, Rose goes to him and manages to capture him, so she promises the king that she will transform Yusato into a true healer, but the king tries to explain to her that he is there by accident. Then his friends are notified of the watch is happening, but Welsi reassures them saying that he was not taken to be killed, he had actually been captured by the rescue squad after Rose discovered that he was a healer, after all she is part of this rare class, and her plan is having Yusato as his subordinate. And upon hearing this explanation, Inakami says that he doesn't appear to be in trouble, but Welsi states that Rose's training methods are not the most pleasant. And meanwhile, she explains more to Yusato about his potential to become a healer, and then she introduces him to 
to the other residents of the house, where a giant named Tong welcomes him. Then the other colleague says he is Mill. Then Alec and Gomel come, and finally, the last resident introduces himself as Ged. But when she sees them scaring the newcomer, Rose kicks Tong away to serve as an example to the others. Others, however, they correct her and state that they were being nice to Yusato. And well, she explains to him that all these guys are her subordinates, but they are not healers, as the other two healers from the rescue squad are located elsewhere. Therefore, she herself will be in charge of teaching him healing magic. Then Yusato tries to ask for another instructor, but Rose just ignores him, demonstrating that she doesn't care at all about his opinion, and so she tells Tong to offer a space in her room for Yusato to accommodate. And with that she leaves them alone, and everyone begins to weigh on his mind, saying that Yusato will go through hell when being trained by Rose, and in the middle of the night he stays awake, and keeps thinking about what will happen to him, and meanwhile, Rose is still awake too, and is reflecting on where this story of training a new healer will lead. And upon waking up, Yusato believed that everything what happened had been a dream, but when he looks to the side, he sees Tong beside him, and realizes that he really is in another world. Then Gomel goes to him and says that the boy has a visitor, and then he meets his two worried colleagues, but Yusato tries to reassure them, saying that he is fine, but when he remembers Rose's training, he feels bad again, and says he might not be alive the next day. However, he has already accepted his destiny, after all there is nothing better he can do for now, and this is an excellent chance for him to be useful in something, so Susan commits to doing her best in her training as well. And as for Kazuki, he thanks Yusato, and says that he will also do his best while he is in this world, and then everyone goes on their way, and Yusato stays behind, hoping to be able to help them one day. And with that, Rose goes to him to ask how their conversation went, and the boy starts to shake at the base, but says he had a nice conversation, and she explains that he's not in a prison, so he can meet with your friends at ease, as long as it's not in the middle of of your workout. And then she throws a diary in his lap and tells him to write down his training routine, his experiences and also anything else that Yusato wants to write down. At this she informs him that training will begin after breakfast, and on the first day of training, he feels that Tong and the others exaggerated by calling Rose's training hellish, as the training was too easy. And after they finish, she asks if he already feels something different, and Yusato reports that he is feeling a strange and warm feeling in his chest, and Rose explains that he is feeling magic, and that is the magic that he must learn to expel from his body, body over time. And for that she tells him to read a certain book, but Yusato says that it will be difficult to read something in the language of that world, but she just tells him to open the book. And in doing so, he is surprised to be able to understand the writing, and Rose informs him that all those who are brought there through the hero summoning have a translation spell cast on them. In this she points out the Linger Kingdom in the book, and says that it is in that place that demons live, and because this kingdom is close to them, the demons see them as the first target to be destroyed. And well, she tells him to read that entire book, because it tells him everything Yusato needs to know about the nations, races, and demons of this new world in which he is inserted, and then she leaves him alone to study, and he feels that that it's a very calm workout. On day two, she made him run until he got tired, and on the third day Rose repeated the same training as day two, but this time he had to run until his body forgot that muscle pain exists. But suddenly he ends up falling down from exhaustion, and upon seeing this, Rose tells him to stop resting, but Yusato tries to explain himself, saying that his legs can't do anything anymore, so she slaps his legs, healing them with the ear magic. And then she calls him trash and sends Yuzatoran again without caring about his life, because if he dies in training, she can heal him with her magic, and upon hearing this he feels like screaming and calling her crazy, but how can he not do it? This Yusato decides to vent in his diary, and on day 4, he starts training with the other members of the squad, where everyone starts to praise him, saying that he should try even harder. And upon seeing him falling behind, Rose calls him a worm, and even though he wants to respond, Yusato decides to vent about it in his diary once again, and after a few more days of running, he falls into the mud with strength, and when looking at his hand, he notices it glowing with healing magic. And arriving on day 7, he was again forced to run until he almost became a professional Vasco player, but this time she gave him a little push and kicked him away. And then Rose states that the more he hates her, the harder she will be with him, and Yusato wonders if she would have read his outburst in the diary, but he remembers that she doesn't know Japanese, so there would be no way for her to understand what he 
he is saying, written there, and then she throws him away, so that he continues running, and as a few more days pass, he continues to be kicked, but at a certain point, his entire body stops hurting, and he understands that his healing magic is beginning to take effect, and having learned how to do this magic, Yusato notices that he started to run without ever getting tired, but this training still doesn't seem to make sense in his head, as Yusato believes that he won't be useful for Kazuki and Inakami if he just keeps running. So she tells him to do 30 more laps and speed up the pace, and he looks like he's getting angry, and uses that feeling to prove to her that he's capable of keeping up with the training. And arriving on day 11, Rose adds the push-up exercise to his training, and then she reveals that there is something important in strengthening his body, in this case, if he needs to escape from an enemy on the battlefield, he needs to have agility to do that. Furthermore, he can use this to save his friends who are vulnerable to danger, because the faster he can run, the faster he can save his friends. And upon hearing this, he becomes thoughtful and returns to training, and Yusato realizes that he managed to complete the day's training without her having to shout, and although this was a victory worthy of celebration, it ended up scaring him even more. On the 12th, he spent the day running, and as the afternoon fell, Yusato returned to push-ups, and began to feel his body lighter, but on the 13th Rose added weights to his body, as she noticed that he was already accustomed to your normal body weight. And the next day, Yusato takes a break from training for lunch, when Tong reveals that he ate his food by mistake, and then Yusato gets angry and starts running after him with the weights on his body. And a week after that, his two friends came to visit him. And when they get there, they both see Yusato training hard, and Rose notices that the boy has slowed down the pace of his push-ups, and so she tells him to try harder, after all that training was still nothing. He responds to this, saying that he is not giving up, and states that she is actually very light, and when she sees Yusato all full of strength, she throws another heavy stone at his back. However, the boy continues to make an effort, and Rose says that he is slowly becoming the man she had projected in her mind, and she comments that she will be able to take the next step with him faster than expected. And meanwhile, Inakami and Kazuki are amazed to see all of Yusato's resistance, and Siglis goes to Rose to complain about his attitude, as she is training him in an extreme way. And then she says that her means are different from his, and her goal is to make Yusato her right-hand man, so she can't give him the luxury of light training. Furthermore, she is amused by the fact that the boy hates losing and never gives up, and the fact that he can withstand her training is enough for both of them to seal the deal. And upon seeing Sigkis trying to help him, Yusato feels that he is getting in the way more, so Rose tells the boy to take a lunch break, and as for Siglis, he leaves his daughter Celia in the care of Inakami and Kazuki, as he will need to have a talk with Rose. And when they are alone, Siglis states that something is wrong with her, and he says that even though the king has reinstated Rose, he is against this decision. And meanwhile, Kazuki explains to Yusato that Siglis was from Linger, and is currently the commander of the kingdom's army, and also the strongest knight. And he informs that they are both learning to fight with swords through Siglis' training, and Yusato understands the whole situation, and asks who the girl is with them. And she introduces herself as Celia Vulgast Linger, the king's daughter, and upon discovering that she would be the princess, Yusato apologizes for having spoken to her so formally, but she asks him to feel comfortable in her presence. Then Inakami remembers that Kazuki reacted the same way when he saw the royal princess for the first time, and then the princess serves everyone a pie, and while they eat, Kazuki asks if Yusato's training is always this hard, and he responds that today's training was actually easy, and then he asks about their training, to which Kazuki explains that they train in sword fighting with Siglis, while the magic part is taught by Welsi. However, all training is carried out taking into account their physical and mental limitations, unlike Yusato's training where nothing is taken into consideration. And then Kazuki apologizes to his friend, but Yusato says he doesn't need to apologize for anything, and when he goes to get another slice of pie, Inakami lifts his shirt to see his toned stomach. And upon seeing his abdominal muscles she asks to be able to touch them, so he tries to escape the situation by remembering that they were there to say something to him. And then Kazuki explains that their intention there was to find out if Yusato was going through any difficulties, and the boy explains that at first his desire to escape was enormous, but over time he got used to it and that desire passed. And he states that nowadays training has become enjoyable, besides, Yusato reports that his life there is not so bad, but he still believes that he is only there out of stubbornness, after all his friends will fight as heroes, and he needs to be useful in helping them. Aen Dupon hearing this, Inakami she says she wants to be saved by him when she
she's in trouble. But he says it's too late for her to try to act like a normal girl. But Inakami says she's always been a normal girl. And then Tong shows up there to bring Yusato lunch. But upon remembering his hesitation last time, Yusato gets angry and the two start to fight. And seeing all this bullshit Celia asks if they should intervene. And Kazuki he says it's not necessary. After all, these fights must already be commonplace in Yusato's life. And then Inakami comments that he is apparently adapting to that world even faster than them. And with that Kazuki is inspired and decides to return to the castle to train more. And when observing Yusato, Inakami feels that there is some reason why they were sent together to that world. And when night comes, the boy feels happy to have been able to see his friends again. However Yusato says he was afraid of Yusato's reaction. Inakami that day earlier. But still, he notes that she was right in saying that his body had changed. And although his training has made him different aesthetically, Yusato still wonders if he would be able to run fast to save his friends. And the next day Rose throws a bag in his lap and says that they are going out and the two of them come to a guard named Thomas and Rose informs him that she is there to introduce one of her boys. And as they walk a little further they arrive in a forest known as the Darkness of Linger, a place famous for always being full of monsters. And then she explains that Yusato must kill a grand grizzly otherwise he won't return home and upon hearing this he remembers the book he read and says that this monster is described as a frightening bear. However, Rose claims that a grand grizzly is no match for him, but Yusato says that she didn't teach him how to fight, so he wouldn't be able to beat this monster, so she just throws him into the forest. And then, after seeing Yusato advance in his training, Rose takes him to the most dangerous forest in the kingdom and orders him to go there and return with a grizzly bear, and he freaks out refusing, but she says that in his current state, he can actually hunt one of these. And with that, she throws him into the forest, without a hint of pity for the poor guy, and while still in the air, he notices her starting to move and realizes that he's going to end up dying from that fall, and he even jokes that she's going to make the news for killing his friend, subordinate. And with that, he has the idea of turning around, putting his backpack down and starting to use healing magic without stopping, while passing through the tree branches, and when he gets up, he decides to follow Rose's request, after all, there was nothing more he could do about it, and even though he is scared, he is excited to defeat the grand grizzly monster, but when it actually appears his heart almost jumps out of his mouth, and in the middle of his escape he notices that the monster is bigger and more frightening than he imagined. However, he trusts his legs to escape the threat, and when he quickens his pace, Yusato feels that he will not need to do anything else to escape, as he believes that the bear will not be able to reach him. But when he looks back, there is the grand grizzly chasing him, but he remembers the hell he went through with Rose, and then Yusato states that this bear is nothing compared to his master. He then positions himself to fight one on one against the bear, but other bears join the battle, causing Yusato to run again. And continuing further, he throws himself into a waterfall, making the bears unable to catch him, and seeing that his prey managed to escape, Grand Grizzly leaves the place with his friends. And as the afternoon falls, Yusato remembers the moments of tension he had that day earlier, and when he analyzes the supplies he received from Rose, he feels the lack of any item that would help him make a fire. So he eats the way he can, and remembers again his impossible mission of defeating a grand grizzly, and after thinking about it a lot he decides to leave this matter for later. And then Yusato writes down on a tree the first day he survived, and the next morning, he prepares and turns his attention to the grand grizzly, and in this he feels that he will need to study his enemy more. And his first objective is to find out where this monster lives, and when passing by a specific place he notices some traces of scratches typical of bears, so he wonders if there are any of them nearby, when suddenly Yusato hears sounds coming from the vegetation. But when the beast shows up, he discovers that it was just a rabbit, and upon seeing it more closely, Yusato notices that the animal is injured, and so he uses his healing magic on the rabbit, and he tells him to be careful so he doesn't get hurt anymore. Once this is done, he takes shelter in a tree again, and waits for the grand grizzly, but the rabbit stays next to him, and then Yusato tells him to stay away, as he is now hunting some very scary monsters. But still the rabbit continues to follow him, and seeing this Yusato deduces that the rabbit may know where to find the grand grizzly, so he makes a gesture telling Yusato to follow him, and upon arriving at the destination, he is actually taken to the grand grizzly. And analyzing the surrounding area, Yusato he deduces that the cave is the bear's den, and so he watches them carefully from afar, being careful not to be discovered by the enemy. And suddenly he has a memory of the book he read, and explains that the grand grizzly species usually lives in groups, so those other bears would be its partners.
others. And well, upon returning to his hiding place, he goes to a river to get water, but he feels that drinking water without boiling it first could harm him. But as Rose didn't give him tools to make a fire, he finds himself without choices. And when looking to the side, Yusato notices that the rabbit came back with him too, and so he explains to his new friend that he will watch the bears again today, and upon arriving at the cave, he reports that nothing different happened to the bears. In fact, Yusato started to find the blue grizzlies cute, and in addition to them he also says he finds the black rabbit very cute. And well, the next day, he wakes up with a very strong pain in his stomach after drinking the water, and even using healing magic, the pain doesn't go away immediately, as his symptom is similar to poisoning. And in the midst of his suffering, the rabbit comes back to hurt him less, and in addition, he takes Yusato to a place where the water is safe for consumption. And while he is hydrating himself, the rabbit notices something strange in the air and goes to investigate what is happening, and then Yusato climbs the tree too and feels that a monster is approaching, and when he sees the rabbit scared, he is already worried. And suddenly a giant snake appears, and he comments that he never read anything about a creature like that in the book that Rose gave him to study, and even though he is unaware of this monster, Yusato feels a frightening aura emanating from him, as the monster leaves the moonlight without noticing it. Them. And four days after that, he continued just watching the bears without doing anything, and even though he found them very cute, Yusato must capture the Grand Grizzly, otherwise he won't be able to return home. So he guarantees that he will catch him the next day, but when the day arrives, the rabbit begs Yusato not to go meet the beast, and then he deduces that the rabbit is telling him to wait for the rain to pass. And when the sun rises again, he starts heading towards Grand, and explains to the rabbit that he needs to kill this monster to get out of this forest, and upon arriving at the cave, he takes a deep breath and takes action. However, when he gets close to the bears, Yusato discovers that they have been killed, which is why he worries, because if Rose discovers that her prey has been taken by someone else, she will become a beast. And upon further analyzing the injuries on the bears, he deduces that this bite is from the giant snake that passed by them at that time, however it would not have killed it to eat, but rather for pure fun. And suddenly one of the blue grizzlies bears appears, and is next to his dead family, and Yusato feels like crap for having lost to Rose, and because his determination to act was in vain. And when the bear starts crying, Yusato feels bad, and so he assures him that he will avenge these deaths, and in the meantime his friends are going to pay him a visit, but Tong informs them that he has been training in the forest for 10 days, and is still did not return. And upon hearing this, Kazuki worries, and says that this is already a long time, but Tong says that the decision of how long he will stay in the forest is Rose's, so there is not much they can do. And Alec also informs that the boss is outside, so they don't know what is happening to Yusato, and as they leave the place, Inakami tells Kazuki that he gets very angry when it comes to Yusato. And then he says that he's just worried about his friend, and she in turn says that she is too, but Inakami says that if Rose asked him to do something, it's because everything is fine, after all she wouldn't put him in a situation extreme to the point of killing him. Furthermore, she believes in Yusato's potential and is therefore sure that he will return well, and in in the meantime, he continues training, and when making an improvised spear Yusato asks the rabbit to take him to where the killer snake is. However, the rabbit remains motionless, and then Yusato explains that he just needs to show him the way and run away afterwards, so there is no danger. And upon arriving at the place, they return to the cave, and even though he is afraid of the snake, Yusato remembers that there is nothing scarier than his master, and with that in mind he advances towards the monster. However, Yusato is almost swallowed alive but he takes this chance to pierce one of the snake's eyes, and then he is thrown away, and the snake attacks once again. And then Yusato notices that he will be more successful in combat if he attacks the snake in its blind spot, in this case the right side, but when he does this, the snake manages to bite his arm, as it had attracted him to its blind spot on purpose. Then Yusato regenerates, and begins to stab the snake from the inside, after all it swallowed the arm in which he was wielding his knife. Once this is done, he he manages to remove his arm from the monster's mouth, but Yusato begins to feel dizzy due to the venom that the snake released, so he complains, saying that a giant snake that still has venom is a lot of appeal. However, he manages to cure himself, because when he drank the water he had symptoms similar to poisoning, and from this Yusato learned that to cure poisoning he just needs to heal himself from the inside out. And after healing himself, he uses the bear to gain momentum and throw himself at the snake, and then Yusato knocks it down with a punch, and finishes 
finishes the monster with several spear thrusts. And at the end of the fight, the bear goes to him to thank him for his help, and Yusato comments that he won't be able to cure the bear now, as he ended up using up all his mana when curing himself of the poison, and what's more, all the effort in battle he made his body completely immobile. And suddenly, the snake, which was apparently dead, gets up, and then the bear stays beside him to help him, but Yusato tells him to run away as soon as possible. Then the snake starts heading towards them, and in the midst of despair Yusato starts to curse Rose, and says that it is her fault that all this is happening to him. And as she says this she appears to save him, and then he asks how she discovered its location, and Rose says that her rabbit took her there, and she reveals that he was watching him at her command, and in fact that his name is Kakuru, your pet. And upon hearing this Yusato explains that he found him injured, and Rose explains that he faked the injury just to gain Yusato's trust. Furthermore, she claims that she was around the whole time, and was already planning to intervene as soon as he needed help, but she intended to intervene as little as possible. And as for the monster he was facing, Rose informs him that it is a monster created by the Demon King's army, and because Siglis was unable to put an end to it during the last escape, the snake ended up escaping into the forest. And seeing Grand Grizzly dead, she is surprised, as he is so strong that not even a full unit of elite troops could take him down, and upon hearing this, Yusato asks if she really thought he would defeat such a monster. And Rose says no, because the objective of this training would be to put him up against a monster much stronger than him, so that Yusato would gain experience. But in the midst of all this, she ended up getting excited about seeing him in action, and decided to just watch from afar, whereupon Yusato gets angry and says he almost lost his life life, and then the bear comes to his defense, but he calms him down by doing caress your belly. And seeing the union of the two, Rose decides to take the bear with them, and then she orders the blue grizzlies to carry Yusato. Once this is done they prepare to leave, but before that she charges him for the insults he directed towards her. At this he despairs, and Rose looks at him with a frightening look, saying that Yusato won't sleep that night, and as for the mission, she qualifies him, and then he asks what that means. And Rose explains that he is now qualified to stay by her side during the battlefield, and she says that even though he hasn't mastered the basics, Yusato already has what it takes to help her in combat, in which case it would be his pain-resistant body, your physical capacity and an unshakable mind. And she informs him that the other two healing users couldn't reach his level, so they never qualified, and Rose states that this is something that his achievement today is something he should be proud of. And then she returns to talking about a more serious subject, and says that the demonic army will attack them soon, and meanwhile, a mysterious man asks the commander of the third army how the preparations for the invasion of Rainy Linger are going, and Amila claims that everything is going as it should, as her units are ready for battle, so they will begin the attack soon. That said, Yusato discovers that the wary's closer than he imagined, and then Rose explains that he will be on the front lines with her, healing the wounded. And when faced with such responsibility, Yusato asks what Tong and the others will do in this fight, and he also says that he knows about there being two other users of healing magic. And then she comments that there are in fact two other warriors with this magic, however they will have different roles in combat, but Yusato still feels unable to fight alongside her with his current abilities. And Rose explains that he will still have time to build confidence in himself, and meanwhile in the enemy castle, Amira informs her boss that the invasion of the Linger Kingdom is close, as the combat units have already prepared for battle. So the Demon King leaves her responsible for leading the troops, and although he doesn't want her to fight to the death, he asks Amira to try as hard as she can, saying that she promises to do her best. And while walking around the castle, one of the servants comments that he noticed Commander Amira's anger in the presence of the Demon King, and so she just tells him to keep focusing his attention on his work, and calls him the Doctor of Monsters, so he asks Amira to stop calling him that, and says that his real name is Hiroluk. Furthermore, he informs her that his work is going very well, after all he has just created a new prototype of a monster made by demons, and upon hearing this she is interested in going to see his project. And arriving in his room, Hiroluk says that the monster is highly poisonous and has a huge body with sharp fangs, and when naming it, he gave it the name, Prototype 72 made by the demon Balginac. And upon hearing this, Amira informs him that his previous project had the same name, and then Hiroluk remembers that when they invaded the Linger Kingdom, this prototype would have fled after being injured by an enemy called Siglis, but even though he was a failure, Hiroluk guarantees that his new project will be successful. And Amira hopes that this is true, after all there are other enemies even more problematic in Linger than Siglis, so he notices that she is talking about 
about the kidnappers, and she says yes, and explains that these people are present on the battlefield, but they do not fight, as their objective is to carry the wounded and take them to the rear without being seen. And in addition to this method of saving allies, they also have a boss healer who heals the injured instantly, and for Amira the worst thing of all is that this boss is a high-level fighter. And in addition, Rose is also an enemy of the Demon King, and for that reason Amira promises to kill her with her own hands, but Hiroluk reminds her that this time she will be the commander, so she won't be able to fight anyone. And so she says she is aware of this, and plans to let one of the demons lead the front line in her place. In the Ksai that demon would be the deadly dark mage, also known as the Black Knight. And the next day, Yusato brings his bear some fruit that he got from the cafeteria, and when he eats one of them, the bear takes his food, showing that he is a true glutton. And seeing Rose's rabbit there too, Yusato remembers when he played with his innocent and pure heart, and to free himself, the rabbit throws his cute charm on Yusato, hoping to be forgiven. And then he ends up giving in and surrendering a fruit for the rabbit too, and suddenly Rose appears to see what the boy was doing, and she notices him calling the bear Blurin, and Yusato explains that he gave his pet that name based on the name of his species. And then Rose informs him that she reported this bear to the king, and with that she got permission to keep it as the property of the rescue team, so he can stay there, but he will have to work too, and upon hearing this Blurin is amazed, at which Yusato asks what exactly his bear should do, and then she puts the bear on top of him so they can do a simulation training, in the case he should treat Blurin as a combat wounded man who needs to be carried, and when he starts to run, Rose tells him to speed up, because if he runs like that the survivors won't survive, and as he continues further, Yusato is surprised by his colleagues who try to slow him down, and then he asks what the two are doing, and Tong explains that they are simulating a battlefield, and in their case, the two would be the plasterers, and after an hour of training, he continues to suffer from the traps of his colleagues, for hours have passed, and even the rabbit was helping to hinder Yusato, and as he continues a little further, he ends up falling unconscious on the ground, and notices that it lasted less than he expected, and then Rose deduces that this is the current state of his resistance on the battlefield, and she explains that humans generally feel exhausted by nervousness, fear and impatience, and in Yusato's case, this would explain his tiredness before his time. And upon learning this information, he asks how to get around it, and then Rose says that he must simply get used to this situation, so he must obtain a mental state of an ability to react that does not break with his fear. And before leaving, she tells him to run back around the castle and the city as soon as he recovers some mana, but he must do this while carrying Blurin. And upon returning to training, everyone around notices the boy running with a blue grizzly on his back, and then Yusato realizes that even though his bear is docile, he is still seen as a monster by everyone. And when he wakes up, Blurin sees a stall with some fruits from afar, and asks them to go there, and when the girl assists Yusato, he informs her that he has no money, so he won't be able to buy anything, so he takes the opportunity to find out the name of those fruits, which Blurin likes so much, and the lady says that those fruits are peffles. And upon noticing the attendant being very friendly and receptive to him, Yusato feels free to ask one more question, and questions why everyone around is calm even with him carrying a blue grizzly bear. And then the lady says that he is part of the rescue team, so people trust him, what's more, she informs him that there are many other scary runners in the rescue team, so everyone is already used to it. And upon seeing who the scary guys are, Yusato notices that he is the calmest of them all, and so he decides to leave, but before that the lady gives him a fruit for free, as a symbol of the brief friendship they made. And when leaving the place, a girl named Amako goes to the front of the fair and watches Yusato leaving, and in the middle of his trip, he decides to take the opportunity to visit Kazuki and the Inakami. But before he could continue on his way, a boy insists on getting his attention, and when he notices that someone is calling him, they stop to talk. And the boy reveals himself to be a member of the rescue team, and introduces himself as Orga Fleur, one of the organization's healing magic users, and as they conserve a little more, the boy stays on top of everything, and discovers that Yusato is a of the summoned heroes. And upon hearing this, Yusato says that he trains so hard to the point of forgetting that he came from another world, and then Fleur 
says that she is surprised by the fact that he can handle the captain's training without dying. After all he and his younger sister were never able to keep up with the captain. Rose's rhythm. And then Yusato asks if she would be the other user of healing magic. And Fleur says yes. And explains that they have a clinic in the city where they cure citizens with healing magic. But upon hearing this, Yusato wonders if he really knows how to cure himself. After all he fainted just now. To which Fleur says that he is not very good at healing himself. But on the other hand he is very competent at healing people. And even with this limitation, Fleur is still part of the rescue team, and explains that she works under the captain's command, taking care of the injured at crucial moments, and then Yusato remembers when Rose had told him that he would take care of the injured on the line. Facing, he then asks what exactly Fleur and her sister do on the battlefield, and then he explains that Tong and the others bring the injured soldiers to the rear first, and then he and his sister heal the injured there. Then Yusato informs him that Rose wants him to be part of the vanguard, but he confesses that he does not feel comfortable doing this, as Yusato believes that he does not have enough skills to take on such an important and decisive role. And then Fleur explains that this position is the most dangerous of all, after all if they are injured and left behind, everyone can only wait for death, however if there are users of healing magic around, they can even be saved. But even though this work is tiring and dangerous, Fleur states that the captain would not choose him without having complete trust in him, and after this brief dialogue, Fleur decides to return to the clinic, and in the meantime Yusato returns to his training. But before they actually say goodbye, Fleur asks Yusato not to hate Rose so much, after all she is just a bit clumsy when dealing with people, so the boy says he doesn't hate her, they just have some complaints to make about her. Having said that, he goes on his way, and Fleur notices that this time Rose has found the ideal ally, and suddenly his sister appears and complains about him leaving her alone at the clinic, and he in turn comments that he just met an interesting boy. And when Yusato arrives at the castle, the guard leaves him free to enter the property with his bear, after all Rose gave him permission to do so, and when he gets close to his friends, Inakami notices him with a blue bear that he didn't have before. And then Yusato explains that this is his companion, and he allows her to touch him, because Bluren is docile, but when she puts her hand on him, Bluren refuses to let her caress him, and to disguise this, Yusato says that he is just very shy. And then he suggests that she call him by his name, but as she does so, the bear bites her hand, and leaving Bluren aside, she realizes that she hasn't seen him in a long time. And when he notices her hand, he notices that the girl put a lot of effort into sword training, so he heals her, and then she comments that Kazuki isn't there now, as he went to gain experience fighting monsters alongside Siglis and the others. And meanwhile, Kazuki asks Siglis if the Demon Lord's army will attack soon, and he confirms that they will, and deduces that this time they bring even more powerful forces with them, but he says he is safe with Kazuki and Suzun by his side, in this battle. And as they continue further, they come across a horde of enemy wolves, and Yusato hopes that his friend will be okay, and Inakami says that he will only be gone for a few days, and as soon as he returns, it will be her turn to get experience. And after this brief dialogue, he decides to follow his path, and then he notices that his friends are trying very hard, after all they will have a war soon, and for that reason, Yusato is willing to train even more, so that he can help them. And when he gets home, he notices Rose awake, and so she asks him what he thought of the training, and Yusato says he will train some more, having said that she decides to leave him. But before Yusato comments that he was scared at first when she talked about the Demon King's attack, but a motivation arose that made him want to participate in all of this, in this case, he wants to protect his friends, and when he heard him speaking with so much conviction, Rose puts her faith in the boy, and tells him to protect everyone. After all, this is the mission of the rescue team. And the next day, she wakes him up with a message from the king, where he asks to see Yusato, as he wants the boy to participate in the training of the great heroine Suzun. And the next day, she wakes him up with a message from the king, where he asks to see Yusato, as he wants the boy to participate in the training of the great heroine Suzun. And halfway through, he wonders why he is participating in Inakami's training, and then he comments to Rose about Commander Siglis and the knights having accompanied Kazuki. In this she says that they received the same request for the training of the hero Kazuki, however she refused, as Yusato had just returned from the forest, but still, the king made the same request to her again the night before, and then Rose decided not to refuse a request from the king twice. And then she informs him that Yusato will be their healer in case of emergencies, and when she gets there, Inakami says she is surprised by his presence, as she didn't imagine they would get together. Then she introduces Aruku, 
the knight and then Korin the wizard and when he looks at Uruku Yusato feels that they have seen each other somewhere and then the young man comments that he usually works as a doorman at the castle. And while the two chat, Rose goes to Inakami and explains that the healing magic that Yusato uses is not omnipotent, so if she dies he won't be able to do anything to help her as his magic is only capable of healing minor injuries and poisons. And that said, Rose guarantees that Inakami will do well in most of the problems she faces, after all the girl was trained by Siglis, and after warning her about this, she goes to Yusato and asks if he wants to receive some advice too, and he prefers not to accept it because in his mind she will just throw insults at him, so she says goodbye to them, and then Inakami comments that his mentor is really very strong. And meanwhile, Kazuki continues training his swordsmanship hard, until the princess comes to him, and comments that the boy already trained a lot the day before, and she says she is disbelieved to see him training so early. And then Kazuki explains that he had a full night's rest, so he is fine and able to have a full day dedicated to training, but she becomes worried again and asks if he was overdoing it. And Kazuki says no, and meanwhile, Inakami and Yusato follow him, and on the way she comments that Kazuki was very excited to get as much combat experience as he could. And for this reason, he felled several monsters on the plains, near a forest called Linger's Darkness, and she claims that this is where they will go to. And upon hearing that name, Yusato remembers Bluren's home, and then he wonders if his bear will like to revisit this place. And speaking of him, Inakami tries to take advantage of the moment when Bluren is sleeping to pet him. However, Yusato takes her hand away, and the two start an argument, until Bluren ends up waking up because of the noise, and then Yusato makes him walk on his own legs, and upon seeing this, Inakami notices a chance to touch the bear, and is willing to carry it too, but when he climbs on her back, she ends up being crushed by him, and then Yusato tells her to be careful not to hurt herself anymore before the fight, and she apologizes for making him use his healing magic too soon. However, Yusato says that this it's not the part that bothers him, and as they continue further, Korin detects the presence of several creatures close to them, and then Aruku is on alert, but Korin soon realizes that in fact that presence was that of other humans, and when they are discovered, one of the men explains that he was planning to ambush Yusato and his group, and upon seeing that in this group there is a knight from the royal palace and a wizard, one of the bandits gives them a little morale, however they order everyone to hand over their belongings anyway, and claim that they have a numerical advantage. And then Inakami is amazed to see real bandits, and she reveals that this is the first time she has seen people like that, and then Bluren goes ahead of the group, and when they see him, everyone despairs. However, one of the bandits warns them that that bear is still just a cub, so they don't need to fear anything, so they plan to catch the bear to turn it into skin, and upon hearing such barbarity, Inakami attacks the bandit who suggested this. And then Yusato is relieved that she didn't kill him, and she explains that she trained a lot to be able to control her power well, but their conversation is interrupted by another bandit, who attacks her in hand-to-hand -hand combat. He then calls his companions to attack together, and then Inakami finishes them all off in a single attack of his lightning magic, and when he is hit, one of the bandits complains about this power, and says that it is unfair. Then Korin alerts them that he felt another strange reaction, and suddenly several boars fly at everyone, and when faced with this scene, Aruku is left without understanding anything, and explains that the boar's habitat should be deeper in the forest. And then Bluren goes on the attack, and meanwhile Inakami and Yusato are thrown away, and already in the air he uses his healing magic to keep them safe, and when looking around, Yusato notices that that place is the same as he was while running away from the bears that day. Then he remembers that there is a waterfall right ahead, and so he tells Inakami to hold his breath, and as they fall, Yusato ends up getting the worst of it, but she catches him and guarantees that she will take him to a safe place. And then he awakens and heals her wounds, in which Inakami apologizes for everything that happened, but he states that he is happy that they fell together, and he reveals that when starting his training in the forest, he was thrown exactly in that place by Rose. And Yusato claims that there are monsters much stronger than boars out there, and upon hearing this, Inakami suggests that they leave that dangerous forest, and then he says that it will get dark soon, so they should look for a safe place to take shelter and return only in the morning of the following day. And then he reports that he slept in the trees last time, so this will be their shelter that night, but Inakami says that she has never climbed a tree before, after all she never had permission. From this Yusato deduces that she is a daughter protected by her rich family, and so he calls her to spend the night in the cave, as there they will also be safe from the rain. But before that, she leaves his side to change her 
clothes and tells him not to spy on her and after that the two go hunting for food together and when electrocuting the river Inakami gets several fish instantly and besides that she uses her magic to light the fire and while he prepares the food she stays in the corner and takes a glance at his muscles then she sees two monkeys and decides to go see them up close but Yusato says they are poisonous so she should just look at them from afar but upon hearing this she simply ignores his advice and says that they are too cute for her to resist and then she is bitten and immediately faints but he heals her and in the middle of that night Kazuki discovers from the king that Yusato and Inakami are missing and the king explains that they missed each other after being attacked by a herd of monsters and when saying this the king states that he was in doubt about telling Kazuki or not however his daughter advised him not to hide anything from any of them then the boy asks if the king has already sent a search party and he informs that he will send one in the morning but Kazuki says that tomorrow may be too late and so he decides to go alone to look for his friends. But before he can leave the place, Rose tells him to wait and explains that Yusato and Inakami are probably together so if that's true they will certainly be fine. And she reminds him that Yusato is her subordinate and so he won't die so easily and she assures him that if he's alive Inakami will be too and in the meantime Yusato is excited to have her by his side as a campmate. After all Inakami helps a lot with his magic and upon hearing this she feels like a convenient tool but he rephrases his sentence and says he was just wanting to express his gratitude for her help then she starts yawning and then Yusato tells her to sleep first but Inakami says that he is the one who should sleep before her as he must be tired from having used so much healing magic and while trying to sleep Inakami notices that he doesn't appear to be that sleepy and so she takes the opportunity to talk to him and asks him how he feels about being summoned to that world and he says that this is a difficult question to answer because at the same time that he wants to return to his old home he also doesn't want that and as for Inakami she claims that she has no desire to return and when trying to guess why she didn't want to leaving that world Yusato deduces that she just prefers that world to her old world and then she confirms his suggestion and reveals that she has no attachment to her old world and in addition she wants to abandon her empty self that she left in her home world and to achieve this Inakami will need to remain in that new world as it is thanks to him that she was able to finally have the freedom she always dreamed of and after listening to her Yusato comments that he feels the same way as her after all he also wanted to change his world and his monotonous daily life and upon arriving in that new world he was able to change his life to the extreme once there he was called up to the rescue team and as he strengthened his determination to protect her Kazuki and that entire kingdom Inakami states that she also has the desire to protect that place like a true heroine that said Yusato sets out to save the people of the lying or kingdom alongside her and Inakami notes that he has become a very trustworthy person since they arrived there and Yusato states that she has also changed as before she was practically untouchable so she proposes to have a closer relationship with him and then Yusato gets all red and decides to go to sleep soon and upon noticing his shyness she starts to make fun of the boy's face but then Inakami says he is happy to have talked to him that night and the next day they leave back to the castle and Yusato tells her to be careful with the monsters having said that they start to hear a suspicious noise just ahead but Bluren appears and ends all the mystery Aruku then runs towards them but soon after ends up fainting from exhaustion and when he wakes up he explains that Yusato's bear suddenly ran away from him and started running towards his owner when he noticed his scent. And then Bluren goes to a specific place and starts sniffing the ground where Yusato explains that that place was the lair where Bluren lived until suddenly his parents were killed by a giant monster. And after finishing locating the place the bear decides to return to Yusato so Inakami understands that Bluren is communicating that she wants to stay by his side now having said that she calls him so they can come back soon. And when they return to the castle, the king he is relieved to see them both well, and Inakami apologizes for causing everyone worry, but the king states that he is the one who owes an apology, as they put them both in a terrible situation. But Yusato claims that he is already used to this type of situation, so he doesn't need to apologize for anything, but when he notices that he said too much, Yusato gives the excuse that he used to walk in the forests in his old world. Then the king asks how his training with the rescue team is going, and when Faith 
faced with a difficult question like that, he looks at Rose and just says that things are going well and Yusato notes that she has been training him until even mentally. And then the king informs that Susan's field training will be rescheduled for later so he asks her to rest for now so she and Yusato leave the king's room. And then Inakami asks if there is something bothering him and Yusato just says that he was curious to know why Rose and Siglis were left behind, after all, that minister's expression sounded very serious to him and she comments that she actually noticed something suspicious of that man. And then the princess goes to them with Kazuki and the boy states that he was very worried about their disappearance in the forest, so Yusato apologizes to his friend and Celia says that Kazuki was about to leave the castle to go after of the two and upon hearing this, Inakami calls the boy reckless. And when talking outdoors, Kazuki explains that he just didn't go after them because Rose had guaranteed that Yusato wouldn't die, and then the boy deduces that she only said that because the forest is very good compared to her training from before. And then Kazuki states that the captain actually has a lot of trust in his disciple, and upon noticing that he actually believed Rose's words, Yusato realizes that his friend is in fact very innocent, and so he asks Kazuki to continue maintaining this purity. After all, he and Inakami are already contaminated. And when they say goodbye, Celia notices that the three have a very beautiful bond of friendship between them, and Kazuki understands that she is only talking about Yusato and Inakami, but Celia says that she is directing this comment at the three of them. After all, Kazuki appears to be genuinely happy when you're around your friends. And then the boy deduces that they are so close because they come from the same world, and upon hearing this, she feels excluded. After all Celia is not from the same world as the three of them, and to feel more accepted, she asks that he treat her with less formality and just call her Celia and not Princess. And then Kazuki promises to call her that from now on, and meanwhile, the king gets straight to the point with Rose and Siglis and informs them that the bandits who attacked Yusato and the others have been interrogated, in which Sergio says that in the bandits' reports, they had said that when passing through the grassland, they would have encountered fewer monsters than usual. But suddenly the bandits were attacked by wild boars in the forest, and the king comments that if these statements are true, the grassland monsters may have fled the area, indicating that there is something dangerous heading their way. And upon hearing this, Siglis deduces that it could be the demon king's army, and the king confirms that he also believes in this possibility, and then Siglis explains that probably the demons will not underestimate them like last time, instead they will do the same, whatever it takes to conquer the kingdom. The king orders Siglis to communicate this to all units, as they need to be ready to deal with this problem before it takes on major proportions, and then Siglis is willing to comply with the order immediately. And as for Sergio, the king sends him communicate all the other ministers about this incident with the demon king, and finally, he is alone with Rose, and says that he has a request that goes beyond her bones. And before he speaks, Rose deduces that the king wants her to confirm the whereabouts of the demon king's army, and then the king states that that is exactly what she should do, and then apologizes for asking something of that caliber from a captain. However, Rose says that she trusts her legs to carry out this duty, after all she is the fastest person in the entire kingdom, so she says goodbye to leave, but first the king asks if she would consider leading a troop again, and Rose states that she has no interest in doing that again, and then she states that she is not as pure of heart as he thinks she is, and upon hearing this, the king tells her not to belittle herself so much, after all she has great achievements. However, she says that she is just telling the truth, and upon hearing this, the king notices that she is remembering her last experience leading a troop, and Rose comments that she will not forget when she accepted the death of her colleagues, after all, scar on her right eye wouldn't let her forget them. And then the king tries to console her, and says that those deaths are not her fault, but Rose explains that her presumption was essential in leading her colleagues to death, and regardless of whether she is competent or not, Rose states that if if your partners die, it's all over. And for her, that scar on her eye is a punishment so that she never forgets her sin. Furthermore, Rose reveals that she only created the rescue team to lead a group that heals people instead of fighting. And then the king reminds her that her rescue team saved many soldiers two years ago, so he believes that she was already able to achieve her goal. But Rose says that there is another reason that made the rescue team form. In this case, she wants to have a subordinate who doesn't die. But upon hearing this, the king King states that she cannot achieve this goal, as it is impossible, but Rose explains that everything can be achieved with adequate training in healing magic, because by doing this, the person creates a mental fortitude capable of withstanding anything.
anything. And in addition, she states that she has already found the ideal person who meets these criteria. In this case, that person is Yusato. And Rose explains that the boy has just the right amount of rebellion. After all he never submits to anything. And for these reasons, she wants to transform him into her ideal healer. Having said that she decides to continue her patrol. And as for Yusato, he receives a letter from his master. And upon opening it, Rose asks him to deliver another letter to a specific address. And meanwhile, the Demon King's army continues building a bridge to reach the kingdom, and then the commander notices the Black Knight sighing, as if he had something to say. He comments that she is more excited than usual, and this makes him a little bored, and then the commander demands more respect from the Black Knight, but he states that he really doesn't care as much about this as she does. And when faced with all this hassle, the commander tells him to follow both orders correctly, after all, he is now her subordinate, so Hiraluk goes to her, and notices that the commander is going through a very difficult time. And then he states that the construction of the bridge is going well, and the commander informs that within a few hours the bridge will be ready, and so they can finally begin the invasion of the Linger Kingdom. And suddenly the other demons notice that there is a spy watching them, but the commander states that they will not have any problems, after all their invasion will take place before this spy can even present his report to the kingdom. Then the bridge is hit by a log tree, and when they get closer to see who threw it, they find Rose staring back at them, and after that she simply leaves the place, and explains that the kingdom will have a few more days now that the bridge has been undone. And the next day, Yusato looks for the address where Rose told him to deliver the letter, and on the way he notices that people still look at him strangely, even though Yusato is unaccompanied by Bluren. And as he continues further, he returns to the same market as before, where the lady informs him that she has restocked the fruits that Bluren likes, and so Yusato has to stop by later to buy the fruits. So he goes to the house where he needed to take the letter, and is soon welcomed by Amako, and upon seeing him, she realizes that he is Captain Rose's new recruit, and when he was about to introduce himself, she stops him, and explains who found out about him through his brother. But when trying to get her name right, the girl gets confused, so he introduces himself as Yusato, and as they talk a little more, she informs him that that place is the Fleur Clinic. And as for her brother, Amako says that he is examining a patient, so they sneak in the door to watch the boy work, and upon seeing the color of his mana, Yusato comments that Orga apparently has very fluid mana, therefore she is very different from his mana. And at the end of the consultation, the patient wakes up 100% cured, and the boy's mother thanks Orga for his care, and after that, Yusato gives him the letter, and then Amako enters the conversation again, and asks about the other members of the rescue team. And Yusato says that his friends are still as scary as ever, so Amako deduces that they are fine, and then he asks why she left the rescue team, and she explains that she left the organization because she was worried about her brother, however Amako remembers that Rose was very enthusiastic about teaching her disciples, especially because the rescue team had just been created, and over time, she states that she began to be unable to follow Rose's training, in addition to that she also began to feel afraid of her master, but Amako says that Rose has become happier lately, so Yusato deduces that it's because he's become her new punching bag, and suddenly a man comes to the office in despair, and asks Orga to help his friend who fell out of the house. And upon arriving at the scene, he asks Yusato to help him with the medical care of all the injured, and he remembers that so far he has only healed Orga and his friend in Akami, and in both cases, the injuries were not no big deal, unlike the injured man in front of him. However, Yusato remembers that he will need to heal people with injuries even worse than this man's, so he decides to act as soon as possible, and then Orga tells the boy to be calm and believe that he is capable of healing the person in front of him. And upon hearing this, Yusato remembers that Rose herself believes in him, so he should also have that same confidence in himself. And after the two finished the healing work, Orga comments that it would be great to have him helping at the clinic when Yusato is in his free time. And then he promises to stop by the clinic again, and Amako tells Orga that he was incredible in advising Yusato on how to heal the injured man. And upon hearing this, the two laugh, but Orga decides to talk about something important, and in informs that the letter to Rose, warned about the war to come. And then he explains that both she and Yusato have no experience in combat, so the only thing they can both do is trust in their own ability to survive. And meanwhile, Yusato stops by the fair and buys Bluren's favorite fruits, and on the way back home, a child stops him, and shows Yusato some scenes from the war in the future, and when he sees his friends being killed by the night black he starts to feel sick. And this was another video on the channel. If you liked it and want more videos like this, subscribe and leave a like, 
See you in the next one.